Welcome into the Wiltfong Whip Around with Steve Wiltfong. Today is Monday, August 5th. I'm your host, Josh Newberg. Now we are back at it after taking a week off. It's great to have Steve back because we got a lot of action that went down over the weekend. We're going to talk all about it on today's show. But first, make sure you guys are subscribed. Lock in to the best recruiting channel on all of YouTube, the On3 Recruits channel. Make sure you guys are subscribed. All right, let's bring in Steve Wiltfong. Steve, we got to start with Auburn because they are hot out on the plains just over the weekend. Top 50 edge Jared Smith commits on Saturday right here on the On3 Recruits channel. But that's not it. There's a ton of buzz going on, and we're just going to cut right to the chase. Quarterback Deuce Knight has been committed to Notre Dame for nearly a year, and now there's smoke that he could be flipping to Auburn. You had a huge story that kind of took the lid off this thing on Friday. Give us the details and what you're hearing on Deuce Knight. Well, Auburn's kind of been spatula city since Hugh Freeze and this staff got on the planes. That first recruiting class they finished off. At the end of the 2023 cycle, had a lot of big clips. They're looking for more here in 2025. They just with Derek Smith from Alabama, one of the top athletes in the country. They're going to play in both ways, Josh. And Deuce Knight is the guy that they want under center commanding this whole thing. He is the quarterback that they've locked in on. We've had Auburn kind of hovering around a few quarterback flips this cycle from Julian Lewis of USC to the in-state guy, K.J. Lacey in Texas, but they're all in on Deuce Knight, and I like the way it's shaping up right now. The intel is favoring Auburn. When I shake some trees around South Bend, when I shake some trees around Auburn, when I shake some trees around Ole Miss, I like the way it's coming up for Auburn right now. They just got to get it across the finish line. I think Deuce Knight likes Auburn's track record and history at quarterback. What Hugh Freeze has done offensively, the receivers that Auburn has recruited, led by Cam Coleman, at Auburn, he's got a chance to spend time around those guys. I think he feels like he fits in. Auburn is in fantastic shape to flip Deuce Knight as they try and make a run at a top five class. They were top 10 last year, Josh, finishing number eight. They're number six right now. Good chance to finish in the top five with some of these big timers they still have on the board. Yeah, and we knew, you know, with all these early quarterback commitments that we could see some flips. Now, he's not – Deuce Knight's not the only one that you're reporting that there's some flip talk around. Also, Houston Longstreet, who is committed to Texas A&M, you're reporting that he's been talking to USC. So this leads me to my next question for you. Is the Houston Longstreet and USC talk related to what's happening in Julian Lewis's recruitment and the fact that, you know, he's also looking at Colorado? Are all these things tied together? Well, had Julian Lewis committed to USC in the fall like he did and not talk to anybody, not take any other trips, Coach Heward over at USC would not be building any relationships with any other quarterbacks. They'd be locked in on Julian Lewis. That was their number one guy this cycle. But Hussam Longstreet told me at the Elite 11 Finals that he'd been talking to Coach Heward over at USC. He's committed to Texas a and I think he's strong in his commitment to the Aggies still. But I think things are starting to pick up with USC here. Uh, as look, man, if you're, if you're talking to somebody else, we're talking to somebody else and the local quarterback is pretty darn good. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. But as I talked to you this morning, I still think Hussan Longstreet is strong with Texas A&M. And do you think that Julian Lewis is strong with USC? Well, that's the, that's always been the tough one to put a finger on, right? It just depends on who you talk to and what day of the week it is. When he announced that he was reclassifying, there was a chance that he was also going to announce a decommitment. But Lincoln Riley went into school that week. That was when college coaches were on the road and was able to hold that off. And when you talk to Julian Lewis in the past and his dad in the past, they know what that opportunity is at USC to be the starting quarterback for Lincoln Riley. You're pretty much guaranteed to win the Heisman Trophy. You're pretty much guaranteed to be the number one pick in the NFL draft. You're pretty much guaranteed to stay healthy under center. Lincoln Riley's starting quarterbacks have stayed healthy historically. They like the offense. How Coach Riley pours into the quarterback position and the offense. Those are all things that are exciting. They just continue to go through their process and have conversations with other schools and take a bunch of other visits, and that's okay. But now you're here in a situation where USC's like, well, look, we got to talk to other quarterbacks now. Uh, we're at a position now where Auburn is not recruiting Julian Lewis as much as they're recruiting Deuce Knight right now right you still have Colorado pouring everything into Julian Lewis you still got Indiana pouring everything into Julian Lewis 
USC, you know, you know, talking to his source last week, they thought he would stick with USC. But I think these recruitments remain fluid, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited and interested to see where that one goes. I don't think that's ever been reported. Lincoln Riley prevented Julian Lewis from decommitting when he reclassified that that was well, I wouldn't right. say I that think... specifically. I, what I would say is that there was thought of maybe reopening the process at the same time that he reclassified. And Lincoln Riley went into school that week. Could they have still not opened the process had Lincoln Riley not gone into school? I don't know. I'm just saying that Lincoln Riley at USC have poured a lot into Julian Lewis. That recruitment, he was number one on their board in 2026. They never offered a 2025 because they knew he was going to reclassify. Bryce Underwood was even interested in taking a visit out to USC before he committed to LSU. And they were like, no, uh, you're a talented player, but Jillian Lewis is the guy we're locked in on. That's how USC does it. That's how Lincoln Riley's always done it. One quarterback at a time. You're my guy. I'm investing everything in you. Uh, but this is, you know, one of the one of the few times where we've seen one of his quarterback commits show interest, so much interest in other schools. Obviously, Brock Vandegrift was committed to him at Oklahoma, decommitted and and, and flipped to local Georgia. Uh, just Julian Lewis uh, recruitment has been a lot more uh, drawn out. Yeah. All right, Steve, let's get back to the Plains because there's more good news for Auburn. We're still in this Auburn segment, and you have a new RPM pick in for Tyler Lockhart. Yes, he was already committed to Auburn once, and now in this NIL era, back you know, five, ten years ago, Steve, when a, when a guy decommitted, we very rarely saw him even consider the team that he was coming from. Now, a recommitment is a new term that we use quite, kind of frequently, and now you have RPM in for Tyler Lockhart to go back to Auburn? What's going on here? Yeah, a source with knowledge of the recruitment told me last week that they expect him back in the fold at some point. So he's still on commit watch for Auburn. Look, uh, Hugh Freeze and his staff, they're built for the recruiting trail. They're mixing it up. They're looking for flips. They're recruiting the best players in the country. They want to restore Auburn uh, back into a national title contender. And you can't do that without acquiring talent. They're doing it on the trail doing it in the portal uh they're uh uh they're exhausting all avenues and i think this is another one that's going auburn's way right now it sure seems like it and one that seems like it's trending slowly in auburn's direction is five-star corner naeem offered who's committed to ohio state there hasn't been much talk about him potentially flipping but we can't ignore that he keeps showing up at auburn here and there so naeem offered can auburn flip him well, I, you've heard me say, Josh, that I think anyone trying to flip Naeem Offord from Ohio State is going to be a major uphill climb because of his relationship and the family's relationship with Tim Walton, uh, the Buckeyes cornerbacks coach in Ohio State's track record of player development. But Auburn, they got their walking stick, and they're navigating that hill, Joshua. They're trying to get up to the top, and I view them as a contender for Naeem Offord. He's been there twice this summer. His official visit in June returned for Big Cat Weekend. And I feel some optimism around the plains for Naeem Offord in Auburn's position right now uh, as they try and flip him. I view Auburn as the biggest threat to flip Naeem Offord. Certainly you got Oregon and Alabama and some others trying. But as we talk right now, going into fall camp, uh, Auburn is getting up the hill a little bit. Man, what a run it would be for Auburn if they could lock down the number one player in the state already dominating the state just in the in that top 10. But to land offered could vault them into really right now they're sitting at number six. So Auburn fans, talk to me and Steve. How do we feel about this class? Is Does it have top three potential? Landing Naeem Offered would certainly get you there. So let us know. Comment section below. All right, Steve, let's talk five-star offensive linemen. We got some big ones coming off the board this month. Here they are, David Sanders, Josh Petty, Michael Fasusi. We're going to talk Andrew Babalola as well, but we got three that have decision dates. Let's start with the first one that's coming off the board. Interior offensive lineman, Josh Petty. Yeah, a lot of teams are recruiting him as an offensive tackle. We have him ranked as an interior offensive lineman. Regardless, he's a five-star. He's going to make his decision August 12th. What's your read on this recruitment? Yeah, he could play center on the next level too, Josh, a guy that has multi-position flexibility. At the point of attack, there's been a lot of buzz that Ohio State is making a late charge here. I'm certainly seeing the Buckeyes as one of the schools he's given some deep thought to here at the end of his process. Florida State got the last visit. That's the on-three RPM, but I'm not feeling as good about that one, working this one 
with Chad Simmons on three uh, colleague. Georgia Tech is a program that's trending up as well. And this could be shaping up to be a Georgia Tech-Ohio State battle unless that last visit to Florida State was a real needle mover to get Florida State back around. Uh, Because Georgia Tech and Ohio State are the programs with the momentum right now. Georgia Tech making a push for a top 25 class right now as Brent Key and company are doing a good job. This is a guy that Ohio State has gone all in on here at the end of the summer, and the Petty family is feeling it. Well, that could be huge because it seems like Ohio State might be surging for Josh Petty, but they feel it feels to me, and you're probably going to tell me I'm wrong, it feels like to me they are fading for David Sanders after Sanders showed up in Lincoln, Nebraska, and Knoxville, Tennessee on that final weekend. I don't think it's a coincidence that they're going hard on Petty right now, but tell me, is David Sanders a two-team race or a three-team race as we're just about uh, under two weeks out on, on uh, David Sanders? I was recently introduced to Roback, and I couldn't be more excited. When I say impressed by the quality and comfort, I mean it. I literally can't take this stuff off since trying it on. For starters, the Roback polos are my favorite polos. They not only have fun designs for every occasion and season, but they fit perfectly and easily transition throughout the day. Roback's everyday shorts are the perfect pairing as well. They are so comfortable and have an elastic waistband and great fabric that is made to stretch. Finally, the Roback hoodie is by far my favorite piece of clothing I own. It is so comfortable. I wear this to start my day, end my day, and everything in between. Easy to be active in it or just relax. The hoodie will fit whatever the day has in store. They have also released a ton of new products. Between their brand new Tailwind tees and bathing suits, Roback is ready for the warm weather. Roback has also been proudly leading the NIL charge, having signed partnerships with college stars Jalen Milrow, Cade Klubnick, among many others that are becoming the go-to brand for college athletes. Use the code STEVE on Roback.com for a generous 20% off for all new customers through the end of this week. That's spelled R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com. That's 20% off all performance polos, shorts, and more with the code STEVE. Well, dialogue remains consistent with Ohio State and the Sanders camp, and Ohio State has shown David that he can succeed at the highest level in all avenues within their program, from the way they develop offensive linemen to the consistency that they play in the biggest games in college football year in and year out to the resources that Ohio State has for their pro- for their players on and off the field. He's also an aspiring orthopedic surgeon, Spent a lot of time with Ohio State talking sports medicine. So Ohio State, they've done everything they can to show David Sanders that they check all those boxes. He's built relationships with the Ohio State players and recruits. His family has built relationships with the Ohio State's players' families. So I think they're still in there. But Tennessee is the program that seems to be where you find the most confidence in the David Sanders recruitment right now. Yeah, that's me talking to sources this past week as well. I, I Look. Any big recruiting weekend that Tennessee had this calendar year, David Sanders has been at spring game, uh, 865 Live, official visit, returned this past weekend, and then also visited another time in the spring. I think that's at least five visits this calendar year that he's been to Tennessee, has a great rapport with George McIntyre, Tennessee's quarterback commit in that recruiting class. They really like Coach Ellerby, what he was able to do with Darnell Wright, turning him into a top 10 pick. But those are all things that have resonated with him. Proximity to home, uh, playing in the SEC. I think that Tennessee is a program where you find a lot of confidence uh, around that program and their position with David Sanders. And then here comes Nebraska, right? Uh, they have a lot of resources behind their program. He took a second visit to Nebraska, an opportunity to spend time around players on the team. He didn't really get to do that on his first official visit, which was Mother's Day weekend. Uh, Dylan Rayola was there to pick him up. Uh, I, I think they love the visit, love the reception, love the support. I've seen Matt Rule be a program builder. So Nebraska becoming a dark horse in this recruitment. And then you have Georgia rounding out the top four. They've at times been the leader, perhaps. Uh, been there a ton. Went to the Kirby Smart scavenger hunt this year. Also took his official visit. Uh, Georgia's track record of getting players to the NFL. All things are exciting. i probably put them fourth, though, Josh. You're asking me today, I probably put Tennessee. I'm giving Tennessee the best guess now. Uh, I would still put Ohio State and then Nebraska, then then Georgia. But Nebraska 
a lot of resources behind their program right now. I say pursue David Sanders. Yeah, I haven't checked David Sanders' RPM. Uh, Tennessee now in the lead. So Ohio State had a solid lead in that one for a while. Now it's showing Tennessee at 27.9%. Ohio State now at 20.6. So for a long time, it was Ohio State trending. Now it's Tennessee. And I think I'd agree with the RPM at this point. So let's move on to the next five star. We got to talk about Michael Fasusi. He's going to be making his decision August 21st. And Texas has been the longtime RPM favorite. Are you riding with the horns into his August 21 date? Can be a big, big month for Texas uh, here in August, Josh. Michael Fasusi would be a major part of that. After David Sanders, he is one of the most coveted players in the country, regardless of position. Uh, and Texas is the program that I would probably give my best guess to right now. But you got Oklahoma and Texas A&M doing what they can to also land Michael Fasusi. It's kind of interesting that the all three of the five stars that we talked about, you know, they've been trending to these teams the entire way. And now at the very end, these other programs have a chance to come in and swipe them. We'll just have to see what happens with those. Now, Andrew Babalola, he's another uncommitted five-star offensive tackle that we've been talking a lot about. Do you think he's going to, because there's been some rumors, but he doesn't have a date. Do you think he's going to come off the board before September? And if he does, who do you like? He plans to commit sometime before August 12th. That's the start of his senior year. I've talked to some sources. I think he could do it this week. Stanford and Michigan are the programs that I still think mm -hmm. have the most buzz around it. But he has dialogue still with Auburn, Missouri, and Oklahoma. I think they're Oklahoma. You talk to people around their program, they feel like they're in the middle of it for Andrew Babalola. So that'll be another interesting one to track up until his decision. All right. Let us know. Where do you guys think these five-star offensive linemen are going to go? Some major decisions. Programs are waiting on these guys. Let us know. Comment section below. Where are they going to go? All right, Steve, let's talk Longhorn recruiting because we're going to see if the month of August is going to belong to Texas. There's some major decisions going down, some five-star decisions going down that could shape the Texas class and shape the Texas program for years to come, moving forward, if they are able to land some of these guys. All right, Steve, let's start with the main decision that's going to go down this week, August 7, on Wednesday. Saxy, Texas, five-star wide receiver. Kalik Lockett is ready to decide. What do you think he's going to do? Well, Josh, I logged my on three RPM in favor of Texas at the on three Elite Series in May after we got a chance to talk to him in that setting. And I still like where Texas stands today. There's been some programs that have certainly given him a lot to think about Alabama, them landing Keelan Russell, him taking an official visit to Tuscaloosa, Jamarcus Shepard, Kalen DeBoer, what Alabama has done uh, historically, what this new staff has done with wide receivers and offense. They've given Texas a big run, Texas A&M, LSU, Florida state. He's visited them all multiple times, but I think this is shaping up for the Longhorns to get good news from Coach Sarkeesian and his offense to Coach Jackson and his NFL ped pedigree at the wide receiver position, proximity to home, putting on for your state. I think the Texas Longhorns are the one to beat for Kalik Lockett going into his Wednesday announcement. Wow. Well, that leads me to my next question. Steve, how many five stars can Texas land in August? Because there's more to come. We got safety Jonah Williams. He's going to make his decision. Offensive tackle Michael Fasusi will make his decision. Athlete Michael Terry and wide receiver Jamie French. Those are the other four to go along with Kalik Lockett. Five-star recruits that are all making their decisions in August and all at some point have been trending to the horns and possibly still trending to the horns. So, Steve, break it down for us. How many five-stars can Texas land in August? Yeah, it could be a five-star August for Steve Sarkeesian in Texas. They're at or near the top of the list for all of those five-stars that you mentioned. Jonah Williams took his last visit of the summer to Texas. Has a really good relationship with Blake Gideon. Uh, what Texas can do for football, what they can do for baseball. I think those are exciting opportunities for him. I think them and LSU are the programs that have the most buzz right now for Jonah Williams, so not loving my a and pick right now, but all these programs are going hard for Jonah Williams. Michael Terry, them, Oregon, and Nebraska are the final three. I, you know, it's hard to bet against Texas in mm -hmm. proximity there. 
Uh, but those other two programs are certainly in the thick of it as well. He's trying to make a decision before this senior season. Best guess right now is Fasusi in Texas. But again, Oklahoma, Texas A&M battling in that one for Michael Fasusi. Took a last-second visit to Florida. So are the Gators now alive? Can they take another five-star out of Texas after landing P.J. Lagway a year ago? The zoo's been in there for, for Michael Fasusi. And then Jamie French. Man. That one's had uh, some ebbs and flows, hasn't it, Josh, <laughs> from his commitment to Alabama, to Ohio State leading in the spring, Texas taking the lead in the summer, to LSU and Miami getting visits here to end the summer. He's going to commit at the end of August. Miami got the last visit. I think there's some folks around Coral Gables that think they crushed that, I think they're in a great spot. Chad Summers and I have said as much uh, over the last month that Miami is a major player there. Uh, LSU, another good trip. Texas High had the edge going into those visits. Uh, we'll see if they can hang on there. But first one up is Kalik Lockett, and I like the way that one's trending for them going into Wednesday. Man, what a month of August it could be for the Horns. And we're not even talking yet about the flip targets. Here they are. We're talking to Corey Moore, Riley Pettijan, and Dallas Wilson. We know that Texas was heavily involved when all three went elsewhere. To Corey Moore to Oregon, Riley Pettijan to Ohio State. Dallas Wilson also to Oregon, but Texas not backing down. Are these more long-term names for Texas fans to know, or do you think something could happen before the season begins? Well, they're going to try and get these guys on campus for games this fall. Mm -hmm. And so proximity will come into play. Games are going to be played. What kind of seasons are they going to have? Relationships, coaching, maneuvering, all of that. We're just getting started in this 2025 cycle. Yeah, we are. And so uh, Texas has some things going for them in all of those recruitments right now, particularly Riley, Pettijan, and DeCorey and Moore. That's not me saying that they're on flip watch right now yeah. or anything like that. But what I'm saying is, is that there's a long way to go before those guys have to put pen to paper and say, I'm leaving the state and going to Ohio State or I'm going to Oregon. And one thing I'm 100% sure of is that the Longhorns are going to make another run at these guys. Yeah, they're flip targets. We don't have them on flip watch, but we just know that Texas is going to be involved moving forward with these guys. So uh, as it sits right now, Texas is in 15th place overall, but Texas fans talk to us. Are you guys concerned about where the Horns are right now? Or do you feel really good about the month of August? Let us know. Comment section below. I do not look concerned about Texas recruiting right now. All right. Let's talk some Tennessee recruiting. And, Steve, Tennessee has been just dominating quarterback recruiting. This weekend, they land number one on threes, number one overall quarterback in the 2026 cycle, Faison Brandon, to go along with what Josh Heupel has been doing, just stacking arms in that QB room. How has Tennessee been so dominant when it comes to quarterback recruiting at the high school level? Nobody recruiting high school quarterbacks better than Tennessee started with landing on three's number one ranked recruit in the 2023 cycle, Nico Iamaleva. Then they went and landed four-star Jake Merklinger in 2024. Georgia makes a late run at him. He sticks with Tennessee. George McIntyre committed to Tennessee in 2025. He's the number one player in the state. Out after Bryce Underwood, or right there along with Bryce Underwood, was one of the most coveted quarterbacks in the country in this class. And then you have Faison Brandon committed to Tennessee. A couple things uh, to answer your question. Uh, getting on him first. Tennessee is one of the first programs to recruit each of those guys. Steady, genuine relationship. Coach Halsey, Coach Heupel do a really good job of connecting with these quarterbacks. Coach Alex Golish was involved in that before he went on the USF as well. But so the relationship component, getting these guys at campus, making them feel real comfortable within the program. Phase on Brandon, Tennessee was on him for two years. He's only been in high school two years. So they'd been on him that long. He's very talented, major upside. Tennessee recruited him like the number one quarterback in the country well before Charles Power, Cody Belair, and on three stamped him as such. Then these other programs come in and Tennessee's like, we've been here the whole time. The trait that Tennessee looks for the most when they are recruiting quarterbacks of really any position is how competitive are you? When you go into the Tennessee football facility, Josh, outside of Josh Heupel's office, there's this little putting green. And any recruit that's on campus from Douglas Utu to Faison Brandon, these you got to putt against Josh Heupel 
where he gets a chance to play you one-on-one and he's trying to beat you, but he's also going to give you some coaching maybe if you need it. How do you respond to his coaching? How competitive are you? Do you want to beat him in this little golf game that they got in front of his office? But I think all that little stuff adds up. All four of these guys are competitive. They know what's in that quarterback room. They're all going to push each other. Uh, they're all pushing Nico Iamaleva right now. And uh, that's the position you want to be stacked at. And Tennessee is doing just that. They're landing their top target at each uh, each cycle at the position. I like George McIntyre, man. He was at that Tennessee-Alabama game, Josh, where Tennessee wins. They throw the goal posts in the, in the river. George McIntyre sent me a picture that day of him and Peyton Manning from the locker room. Wow. That's probably when Tennessee became uh, a major contender for him. So great atmospheres, great recruiting program, offense, hypo competitiveness. It's all adding up to some outstanding quarterback recruiting for the ball. Like I said, you only get these behind the scenes stories right here on the Wilt Fong whip around. And let's, uh, Steve, let's stay with Tennessee in that 2026 class because you put a new pick in. I don't know if this is connected to the phase on Brandon commitment, but Tennessee looks like they are now the favorite for Carson Sneed. He's a six foot six, 215 pound. 2026 tight end, a top 175 player overall out of Nashville. Uh, you got him trending to Tennessee now. What's going on with him? Well, he's announcing his commitment today. He was back on Tennessee's campus at the end of July. His brother plays wide receiver for the Vols. His top five uh, also has Ole Miss, Auburn, Louisville, and Ohio State. But I like where Tennessee stands coming into the decision. They've always been the favorite. Had an old prediction at my old place of work. Austin Price reminded me that I needed to get that pick in here at on three uh, from Ball Quest. So I've done just as much. I feel just as good about Tennessee as I always have. He announces today, and I think he picks the checkered orange. All right, Tennessee fans, tap in. How are we feeling about these quarterbacks in this quarterback room? Let us know. Unbelievable job by Josh Heupel and the staff. Let us know. Comment section below. All right, Steve, let's talk about another prospect. This one is on Nebraska Flip Watch. We're talking about wide receiver Isaiah Mosey. He is committed to Oregon, but you've put in a new pick for him to flip to Nebraska. Take us behind the scenes of this one. Yeah, he committed to Oregon in April, but he's been to Lincoln twice since then, his official visit in June. He was back the last weekend in July. His dad was his high school coach his first three years then took a position at UCF. He's now at Nebraska. So Nebraska is a literal family feel for him as well. Spent time with Dylan Rayola on his latest visit. Loves Matt Rule and the environment he's creating around the program. I think Isaiah Mosey ultimately ends up with Nebraska. The Huskers pushing for another top 25 recruiting class. He's one of their top remaining targets this cycle. All right, Steve, we got some decision previews and a couple of loose ends to tie up before we get out of here. So take us out of here. Yeah, four-star cornerback Jonte Gilbert from the Peach State will announce his college decision this weekend. I like where Georgia stands there as the Bulldogs look to improve on a recruiting class that ranks number four nationally. Gilbert was on campus at the end of July. Before that visit, he was trending towards NC State, but Georgia – is the team to beat there. Jaden Sanders is a four-star cornerback on 300 recruit from Kilgore, Texas. He's committing this weekend. Baylor, Oklahoma State, and Michigan are the finalists. He was at Michigan's barbecue at the Big House. The Wolverines are the on three RPM favorite. Baylor's had some big recruiting wins in state here this summer, so don't sleep on the Bears as well. Also logged a recent on three RPM prediction in favor of LSU for Philip Wright the third. A fast, one of the fastest receivers in the country out of Destrian High. He just decommitted from Michigan. He was at the Bayou Splash at LSU. I think LSU is the one to beat there. That does it for today's episode of Wilt Fall and Whip Around. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you hit like and subscribe to the On3 Recruits YouTube channel so you get the latest on upcoming commitments. Our shows like Whip Around, Inside Scoop, The Five Star Flex, and all the latest on the top recruits and top programs on the trail. We will see you on Thursday.